very much to uh, the reader for the uh, kind introduction. My name again is Mukunwe Moses Masaka. I'm the uh, Director General of ICT Commission. Uh, I recognize the presence of some of my friends and colleagues. I can see Dr. Namuna over there, who is an uh, advisor of ICT Commission. The man that we are really depend on in most of the progress that we see in our institutions. Um, dear colleagues, dear friends of, who are working with GIS, this is an area of which I'm very, very interested with since long time. As I normally say, um, I used to work in academia before. I worked in academia for almost 17 years. The, um, and during that time, at one time I worked very extensively um, in, the, in this area of GIS and at that time we were trying to create uh, many, many uh, applications um, in the ministry of land because in one way or another they are the biggest consumers of most of the applications and the data that um, you, you produce. So I, I have a um, somehow experience in this area. I know one thing that many African countries they do have one challenge. Challenge of having a robust spatial data infrastructure. Countries that they have built uh, somehow very good infrastructure on that are uh, countries that you will find that they have relatively good economy. One notable country that they built somehow very good as special data in the South Africa. And we, that's what um, is giving them competitive advantage over other countries in attracting investments. We know lack of proper special data infrastructure, which is basically built on top of what you guys are doing, is the one that causes many, many um, challenges in many societies. For example, lack of reliable information uh, also affects investments. I think you guys understand it very well. Lack of uh, reliable information on that also creates conflicts in societies. We know there are many countries in Africa where there are conflicts between pastorists and people who are their main activities in the world. Maybe, maybe on that problem you'll find lack of proper information in knowing at least the boundaries of what one is doing um, and if the contents are fine and things like that. So what you guys are doing basically is a bedrock of modern economy. Modern economy are built by reliable information that are helping to build special data infrastructure. So what you are doing is a very good thing and we know that and uh, where we're going now, we're going in the right direction. What gives me com um, comfort with this is because even the audience that I see here is quite different from the experts who were practicing DIS 15 years ago. Um, at that time, we used to see very few young people uh, in this area. We know the undertaking of building special data infrastructure for the country is not an easy thing especially the way it used to be before. Nowadays, there are modern tools, there are ways where we can get information, and we can be able to build relatively inexpensive than the way it used to be before. But I do understand that the undertaking is a huge undertaking. We need to help as more people as possible. We need to do this um, activity very methodical so that we can have a robust economy or we can build the digital economy that we want. The digital economy that we want, and this is what I relate to my institution, is the one that consumes data. We need data. We need data of different sorts uh, so that we can have um, 
and into the economy that other countries will admire. So what you guys are doing and what you are commemorating today is very, very important. I see this uh, um, celebration of GIS Day uh, to be in the future the bigger event than this. Because what you guys are doing is what feed to most of the initiatives that we are doing. We say that the economy of today are data driven, right? And being data driven is we expect to get data from you. Now, being able to achieve this, uh, our country is in the midst of the process of digital transformation. We transform ourselves digitally so that we can take advantage of all this data that we have. Of course, we understand uh, there are two things which are crucial to uh, ensure that we build a very robust economy. One is we need to get our data, but of course we need to ask ourselves where, where is our data residing? That's another, another issue. One, we use this application, we acquire data, uh, we feed them to different models, maps, and things like that. But we need to ask ourselves are those data residing in Tanzania or they are residing in other places? To build our economy, we need to build capacity so that this information, this data together, that these maps you create, these models that consume your data, have to reside in Tanzania. And I'll explain why we, we look at that thing. Because like the way I say, most of the intervention involved, the picture of how the digital economy of our day looks, it looks in a way that we'll have tools, tools which are consuming data, and data they are helping us to get insights of different things, we have to plan and things like that. Now, to have those data, we need to build capacity of posting those data. There's a one time I was working in a certain um, project with the Minister of Land. I think it was Southern Toronto. And I was privileged to see some of the uh, satellite images um, that they have over there. Post. Those ones, their sizes are very big, especially if you take a picture that they have many resolutions. It's very big. And having many uh, images like that, it requires also to build your data center. Having data center is one, but you need to have a network connection that is capable to carry those big uh, images from, from satellites, which are very crucial to what you guys are doing. So we see, we saw it very clear that um, to build capacity in your area of DIS, it requires, it requires many things. It requires experts, it requires infrastructure, especially the solar infrastructure, it requires computation power so that you can compute very clearly, and also it requires a robust network that will enable people to access the outputs of what you are doing. So all of these things, they demand us to transform ourselves as quickly as possible. Now in the digital transformation, um, the way we, we, we want to transform ourselves um, very quickly, we look at basically five pillars. Those pillars are the ones that are guiding us to measure quickly that if we are going in the right direction or not the right direction. Now, the pillar number one is digital skills. Right? This is like the way I say as a mapping, when you see a lot of youth that they acquire this knowledge, it means our future is good. Right? Because youth, we are going to well, use your expertise for quite some time. That if I was here and see people for 45 years and about, it means we are going to use them for 15 years or something like that. So we are doing very good with that. Now, in the digital skills, of course, we segmentize it into three layers. Layer number one, basic skills of GIS, people need to understand it, and all those tools that you need to use um, so that you can do your work very well. Of course, we do understand now that AI is helping us a lot, especially in analyzing those huge files, uh, which initially used to take time to get an insight of them. So basic skills are important. Intermediate skills, also they are very important, so that we have people that they can create these platforms and things like that. And then we need to build our capacity in advanced GIS skills that they use AI and other models, the analysis and things like that. 
So we need to strategize on how to build the competence of the basic skills, the GIS, the intermediate skills, and also the hyper skills. So that's skill number one of transformation. Skill number two. Because now we'll be using your data, we we'll are using the maps, we we'll use most of your applications. You use the application that's supposed to be secure. Right? If they will not be secure, it will be difficult for us to get an insight and believe in that this insight is correct. So pill number two, all these things that you're doing, the data you're collecting, the, the maps, uh, the model that you use to give a uh, different kind of insight, they have to be secure, digitally secure. And also, they have to be trusted. Trusted uh, means that we need to put mechanism of consumer protection to ensure that people who are consuming uh, what you are producing, they are consuming something which is truly reliable. And system that they have the safeguards, uh, that can be trusted for with the final user. Pillar number uh, three is digital telecommunication services. All these things that you are doing, they have to run on top of digital telecommunication, which are capable of running huge files that you guys are using and different kinds of applications that you have. So that pillar number three is digital telecommunication services, which we have to look now at our systems in a couple of three times. Um, to just reinforce what I'm saying, um, in 2012, those files of satellite that I was talking about, um, transferring them from 1.8 it used to take time. <coughs> and the availability of network at that time, you find you have been able to download 10% and then network is going off, then you need to start all over again. So we have to make sure that telecommunication services are okay and also we are going to be able to access this information and where you are for people to be able to input those data. Then we need to relate. GIS applications with the main economy of our country. That's the pillar number four. That is, how they need to inform our economy. How they need to make our economy most competitive compared to other places. How can all these things, intervention that we're doing with GIS, can attract investment from other people, or having local investment, trust to invest in them today. Because we do understand very well. Yes. The inability of having reliable data uh, in Tanzania, especially with the geographical data. They create a lot of cases uh, that are relating with land, true or not true. So what you guys are doing is, is crucial for our economy uh, very much. And the pillar number four is a pillar that has to do with two, three things. One is has to do with research in GIS, and then innovation in GIS, and then entrepreneurship in GIS. We have to have startups different kind of startups in that area that are going to consume or they are going to innovate around that. We need very many solutions that they do research, they come up with such new things, models, a different way where we can um, build a very robust economy of our country. So if we are going to do those five things properly, then we are going to transform ourselves, then our economy is going to be even more attractive than the way it is now. Um, where people they will be able to come and say, uh, for example, in the factory, and 100% sure that this um, land that they acquire is, is authentic and things like that, and people they will invest without a problem, than um, having issues with not having a level data for how things are. So GIS is our life, you know it very well, it applies to many, many things. We have started to see already some benefits of having GS applications that are reliable. For example, damper system of the day. The one that um, uh, is just marked with uh, the different addresses that we have, the coordinates and things like that. It has helped us to increase, for example, the collection of taxes in our country, especially forest taxes. We have started to see benefits uh, of that thing uh, in the banking sector and other places. So one thing that I want to, um, to assure you, we really depends on what you guys are doing. What you are going to do is very important. And it basically is the foundation of the modern economy that we want to build. Um, of course, I will not finish my uh, speech without talking about the effect of AI in the field. We need to build competence on that. 
because AI needs three things which are crucial for each one. One, we need to build capacity of computing um, those AI models and for the data that you produce. And then we need to build capacity on how to develop algorithms which can go into the data and mine all the insights and be able to give us the information that we can provide. But crucial of all, we need to have our data and our data has to be 